This is my Pendulite drawing machine. I wish I could take credit for it, but I got the idea from the professional photographer, Mr. Paul Wainwright. It consists of a slow-moving upper pendulum, a faster-moving or shorter lower pendulum, and the hinges are set up so that the two pendulums move perpendicular to each other. At the bottom of the lower pendulum is a flashlight with the lens covered in aluminum foil in which a pinhole has been pricked. The light shines down through the pinhole into the camera whose shutter is locked open. As it does, it creates a series of tracks which appear when the image is uh, developed to be a series of uh, closely spaced curves which can be very attractive. Here's what the camera sees. To produce images such as this. Attractive patterns only occur when the ratio between the period of the upper and lower pendulums are a whole number multiple of each other. For example, 2 to 1, 3 to 2, or 4 to 3. To achieve this, a turnbuckle is used to adjust the length of the lower pendulum and thereby its period. This takes care of fine adjustments. For longer adjustments, pieces of metal strapping are screwed to the top of the yoke holding the flashlight to give the additional length required. It was built using scraps I found in my garage, just bits of wood, hinges, and whatever hardware I had in my tool chest. Uh, the basic dimensions are 31 inches for the length of the upper pendulum, and for a 2 to 1 harmonic ratio, 12 inches for the lower. For 3 to 2, the lower pendulum needs to be about 20 inches long, and for a 4 to 3, 36 inches long. Two and a half pounds of weight is added to the lower pendulum so that it doesn't slow down too fast from air drag. This flashlight is rated at 2,000 lumens, but I suspect it only puts out half of that. For that power and a small pinhole, I found a camera setting of F8 uh, and ISO 100 creates good images. Normally, uh, the table is elevated to be on the same plane as the end of the flashlight. I use the hole as a gauge to determine how far back to uh, pull the um, pendulums before releasing them. And there's also some index marks here at different angles because the angle at which you release it has a strong influence on the shape of the resulting image. Also, the photographs are taken in complete darkness with all surfaces exposed to the lens, either painted black or covered in black velvet. LED flashlights use pulse modulation to flash the light on and off to achieve a dimming effect. If you use a LED and you don't have it on max power, you're going to get little dots instead of lines such as this. The bright zone, just to the right of center, is caused by the focusing lens in the flashlight beaming light straight through the pinhole and into the camera lens. To avoid that, place a piece of white typing paper between the lens and the pinhole, and you'll get nice even lines. I recommend against using string or wire to create your pendulums. The reason is it allows a twisting motion, which if the pinhole is not dead center on the flashlight lens, will result in some wobble and you'll get uneven line spacing as seen in this image. The first time you set up a pendulite, you'll probably get an image like this. It looks pretty trashy. And 
The reason is that you're far away from the resonance point where the attractive figures reside. The following sequence of pictures will show how in 1 8 inch steps we increase the length of the lower pendulum until we get to the resonance point and you can see how the images change. And here we are at the resonance point. Ideally this would be a perfectly clean U with the uh, light tracking over the same line over and over again. But because my hinges aren't the best, my system isn't perfectly true, there's a little crosstalk between the two axes of the pendulums and it gets a little bit of fill factor. The following sequence of images shows what happens if we continue to increase the length of the lower pendulum past the resonance point, again in 1 8 inch step increments. And here we are again with the trace looking like a, a complete mess. If you go back and you look at the differences between uh, the images before and after the resonance point, you can see that they have uh, distinctive shapes. And this can help you identify if you're above or below the resonance point when you build your own uh, pendulite. Okay, here we are back at the resonance point. So far, all of the images you've seen were created by releasing the pendulum at a 45 degree angle so that the amount of displacement of the upper and lower pendulums was about the same. We can change the shape of the image by changing the angle at which it's released. This image was created by releasing the pendulum at 22 degrees so that most of the pendulum's displacement is taken up by the upper longer pendulum. If we go the other way and release the pendulum at about 67 degrees so that most of the displacement is taken up by the shorter lower pendulum we get a very different sort of figure. This points out an important point that you need to be able to rotate your camera 90 degrees to catch uh, some of the images uh, because they're going to be longer and will fit the rectangular shape of the uh, image uh, more appropriately. How long the shutter is open will also have an impact on what the resulting image looks like. This image has the shutter open for 30 seconds whereas this one is 60 seconds and this one 90 seconds image shape can also be determined by the harmonic at which you're working. For example, this is the resonance image at the 3 to 2 harmonic. I always think of this as looking like a worm trying to tie itself in a knot. And here we are at the 4 to 3 harmonic. Both of these images are similar, but they're so convoluted that controlling them to create an attractive image is very difficult. For that reason, I confine my work to the 2 to 1 harmonic. Speaking of which, the following sequence of images will show you some of my favorites. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This one reminds me of a flying saucer or an art deco crab. I call this one the flower vase. Here we have a mask or if you flip it upside down, a Viking helmet. The upper wings of this image remind me of the collar of Maleficent's cloak in the recent movie. Color can be added in post-processing, but I'm not sure it works very well. Except perhaps in the case of this Art Deco butterfly. And again, Thank you very much for watching.